assignment astrophysics and cosmology. We'll do question 14 today. So this is question 14. As you can see, uh, so far, man's space flight has only taken us to the moon. So we have reached the moon, the space flight carrying the man that is to the moon till now. So there are plans to send a man mission to Mars as well. Our nearest planetary neighborhood uh, later this century. Calculate the weight of an astronaut of mass 72 kilogram on the surface of the Mars. The mass of a Mars is 6.42 and the diameter or the size of the Mars is 6.7, 10 raised power 6 meter. So we have the diameter given. The diameter is given to us for the mass and the mass of the Mars is also given. And we want to calculate the weight of an astronaut which is having a mass of 72 kg, 72 kilogram. So idea is that uh, basically what we need, we need the gravitational force. We need this F because like example, if astronaut lands on the Mars, According to Newton, say this uh, mass of astronaut is small m. And the uh, mass of the Mars is capital M. And the distance between them is radius of the Mars. So according to uh, Newton's law of gravitation, that the Mars will pull the men and the men will pull the Mars. The force by which the Mars will pull the men, that is called the weight of the men, uh, weight of an astronaut. So... How we can work out that force, the, pull, the force which pull the man on the surface of the Mars or any gravitational force between the two objects. So when objects are on the surface of the planet, the, that gravitational force, the Newton uh, gravitational force is also known as the weight because that will be equals to weight of a object. So we have F is equals to G, the mass of the Mars, the mass of the astronaut divided by R squared where this F is actually equals to weight. So we just have to substitute the value and the diameter is given. We can just half to work out the radius. So uh, Newton law of gravitation, this, this is a constant value. The constants will be given uh, in the formula sheet. So you don't have to memorize 6.67 exponent minus 11. If you remember these constants, that's good. But you don't have to memorize. Then the mass of the Mars, which is 6.42 into 10 to the power 23. The mass of the uh, astronaut, that is 72. And radius, which is a half of diameter, like diameter 6.79 into 10 to the power 6. So what we have to do, we have to divide it by 2 and then take a square. This will give us uh, what force? So it will be 6 and 267 Newton, approximately he will experience, the astronaut will experience 600 and, sorry, 267 newtons on the surface of the Mars. So whenever they ask the weight of any object on the planet or the gravitational force, that will be F is equals to gm1 m2 over r squared, where F is actually representing the weight of an object. It takes Mars uh, 5.94 exponent 7 to orbit the sun. Show that the radius of the orbit is about 2 exponent 11. Assume that the orbit is circular. So the Mars is orbiting the sun. Yes, you can also do the same thing. It won't make difference. Uh, if you use this formula, for example, the for solving the previous uh, solving the pre to solve the previous uh, question, it's the same thing. First, you work out the value for gravity, which is g the mass over r square. You will get the g, and then weight is mass into gravity. 
So you will get the same answer. It will be same. It won't make difference. So we have like Mars is there and is orbiting the sun. And we can see that its orbit is circular. We have show we have to show that radius. This distance is about two exponent eleven. Assume it is circular and the mass of a sun is given and it takes. So the time interval is also given. The time period is actually given. So what we can do, we can use a formula. Here, the centripetal force will be equal to gravitational force. So centripetal force, which is responsible for circular motion is equal to gravitational force. What is centripetal force? Centripetal force is mR omega square. And what is the gravitational force? That is G, mass of the sun. Here, here it's about the sun and the Mars. So, and because the Ma Mars is rotating, so th this is an example, mass of the Mars. So this will be mass of the Mars and then R square, the radius square. So when we simplify the mass of the Mars, we'll cancel with mass of the Mars. This is R square, so it will go there. So this will become R cube is equals to G, the mass of a sun over omega square. Then we have to take a cube root for this. So R is equals to cube root of G, the mass of a sun and omega. G is a constant, which we have, we have the mass of a sun, but how to work out omega? This is a cube root, not a square root, like one by three, we are taking power. The square root, the power is one by two. Now how to work out omega? Because they mention, uh, they give us a time. So omega is angular displacement over time. But when it is a complete rotation, then omega will, the angular displacement will be 2 pi and the time is t. So the value of omega, we can get 2 pi divided by t. This will give us the value for omega. So we'll have value of omega. We have the mass of the sun and we have the gravitational constant. We'll take a cube root and we'll get approximately 2 into 10 power 11 meters. This will give us the radius of the orbit. Then the Mars does not have a circular orbit. As a Mars complete one orbit, the distance from the Mars to the sun uh, varies by plus minus 10 percent. Like it, in, this is the average distance is there. We calculate the ratio of the maximum radiation flux and minimum radiation flux. So maximum radiation flux, like maximum radiation it will receive when the distance is minimum. And minimum radiation flux, like minimum radiation it will receive when the radiation is, uh, when the distance is maximum. Look, if the Mars is closer to the sun, if the Mars is closer to the sun, it will have a maximum flux. And when the Mars is away, like 10% away, so this is an average position, the mean position, which we calculated. So if it is 10%, less, like the distance is 10% less, the flux will be maximum. And if the ten, distance is 10% more, the flux will be minimum because the flux decreases as we move away from the source. So we have to work out the, the ratio between the maximum flux and the minimum flux. So first what we can do, like we can work out 10% of the average radius like uh, this radius was, this distance was given to us in the, or we have to calculate in the previous part, we have to show that the radius of the Mars orbit is about 2.28 uh, exponent 11. So this distance is 2.28 into 10 power 11. What we'll do, we'll take out the 10% of this. So when we take out the 10% of this, the 10% of this will be point 0 .0, zero point uh, 0 0.2 because I want to take 10% of this, so 0 0.228 into 10 power 11. These are 10%. So here what will happen, 
it will be the total radius minus the 10%. And here, what will happen? The total radius plus the 10%. So total minus 10% and total plus 10%. What we'll get, we'll get the radiation uh, like flux. And see the flux is the formula. What we can do like flux is equals to luminosity divided by 4 pi d square, where d is the distance from the source. Because we have the same um, source here, the sun is the so same source, so the power of the sun is constant. Like this value is constant, and 4 pi is also constant. Or what, what you can do, there's also another way, you can compare the two equations. Like if we talk, talk about the uh, maximum flux, so maximum flux we call distance as d1. And when we talk about the minimum flux, the luminosity is constant 4 pi and the distance example we call that as d2. So if we compare the, like for this equation, it will become maximum flux 4 pi d1 square is equals to luminosity. And for this one, it will become minimum flux 4 pi d2 square in luminosity. If we compare the two equations, we can say the maximum flux 4 pi d1 square is equals to minimum flux 4 pi d2 square. 4 pi is constant, uh, common, it will cancel out each other. So we'll have, if we want to work out the ratio, so the maximum flux over a minimum flux is equals to d2 square over d1 square. And what is d2? d2, because d2 was a distance for minimum, So D2 is a distance for the minimum and D1 is a distance for maximum. Like D1, when the flux is maximum, it is closer and D2, the flux is minimum. So we just have to substitute, as I mentioned, what will the value for D1? It will be the total radius minus the 10%. And what is the value for D2? It will be the total radius minus the 10%. Subtract the 10%. Uh, sorry, uh, value of D2 will be total radius plus 10% and D1 will be total radius minus 10%. And you just substitute, you will get the final answer. So this was question 14. From astrophysics and cosmology.